Bishop Richard Malone has admitted he has made mistakes in the handling of priest sexual misconduct inside the Diocese of Buffalo. Last week, Malone traveled to Baltimore, where American bishops met to discuss the national church sex abuse crisis. While Malone was there, our I-team was digging into the bishop's record in Maine, where he served before coming to Buffalo. Chief Investigator Charlie Speck has the report tonight, but first, we want to warn you that some of the details here are disturbing. At a news conference two weeks ago, Bishop Richard Malone said he had a good record on dealing with sexually abusive priests. You'd call it a cover-up, we call it confidentially. He pointed to his time in the Diocese of Portland, Maine, where he served for eight years before coming to Buffalo. But here in the Bishop's old Diocese of Portland, Maine, advocates for victims of sexual abuse, as well as new documents obtained by the I-Team, paint a much different picture of the Bishop's past, especially when it comes to the issue of sexual abuse. The I-Team traveled to Maine and talked to Catholics like Paul Kendrick, who is an advocate for victims of sexual abuse. The Bishop Malone I came to know here in Maine uh, uh, is an actor on, on a stage. Kendrick sparred with Malone many times, calling for him to be more transparent. His battles with Malone drew national attention when the bishop threatened to deny Kendrick Holy Communion. Malone is a, is a, is a fake, a phony. The Irish say a phony baloney. He's not telling the truth when, when, when he likes to say, I never knew. But even Kendrick didn't know what we were able to find in these confidential documents that describe how Malone handled abuse controversies involving these two priests in Maine. The documents are summaries of two separate investigations conducted by this man, John Brennan, a Catholic deacon and a 30-year law enforcement veteran who retired as the deputy chief of the Portland Police Department. Brennan served as the Portland Diocese internal investigator during Malone's eight-year tenure. He declined an interview request because he is cooperating with the FBI. But Brennan confirmed to the I-Team the authenticity of the documents. With respect to the Vatican and Bishop Malone, he wrote in one report, this was a complete cover-up of the highest order that cannot possibly be explained or defended and still screams out for justice. It was here at this parish in South Portland where a priest was suspended for befriending a violent sex offender and allowing him to live in the parish rectory. The priest was Father Paul Coughlin, the sex offender, a man named John Skinner. Skinner was convicted in 2004 of sexually abusing two boys he met through Catholic youth groups. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison, and the reports describe what Brennan calls two outrageous situations regarding the pedophile and the priest. The first involved a 15-year-old boy whom Skinner allegedly raped. The report says Skinner brought the boy to Father Coughlin, who failed to call the police. Later, according to the report, Father Coughlin tried to get Skinner hired as a youth minister at his parish and allowed him to live in the parish rectory, just steps away from this parish center frequented by kids. Are you kidding me? You, you, have, you have a man who's, who served time, been convicted of child sexual abuse, rape? You have him living in your rectory? After his investigation, Brennan wrote the Vatican issued a mild rebuke of Father Coughlin and allowed Malone to remove him from ministry. But after two years, Brennan wrote that Bishop Malone took it upon himself to secretly return this priest to ministry. Newspaper archives confirmed Brennan's account, quoting Bishop Malone as saying, I believe Father Coughlin has had adequate time to reflect on his actions. Malone took the unusual step of barring Coughlin from ministry in these three cities while allowing him to serve as a priest in the rest of the state. Brennan says Malone reversed that decision only after employees at the Portland Chancery expressed their outrage. I mean, what kind of insanity is that? The so-called crisis in the church has been going on about protecting children, and this guy Coughlin brings in a convicted pedophile to, to, to roam around. And that Coughlin would think that's okay, and then Malone would go to bat for Coughlin? The second case involves Father Thomas Lee. According to Brennan's interviews with more than 10 adults, Father Lee would take them camping when they were children and allow them to swim nude as he shined a light on them. He suggested they should take turns showering, entered the shower area and took photographs of them, invited the children into his bedroom, and while they were still naked, covered their bodies with powder. He would then massage their entire bodies, including their genital areas, often using an electrical device as he massaged them. 
Brennan wrote a 60-page report, but the allegations went nowhere even after the Diocesan Review Board unanimously affirmed the complaint against Father Lee had been substantiated. After a first internal church trial found Father Lee innocent, Brennan put pressure on the bishop, telling him the Father Lee case would come back to haunt him, and that if the Father Lee case resulted in a civil trial or some kind of criminal investigation, I would not lie or cover up the facts to protect the diocese. Malone took Brennan's advice and petitioned the Vatican for a second trial, but Lee was again found innocent after the three judges, all priests, found Father Lee's actions to be imprudent, but none of them were sinful in any respect. Brennan says he was not allowed to submit his report or contact witnesses to testify at either trial. The bishop told reporters he was stunned and disappointed at the outcome of the case, but Brennan wrote, When I complained to Bishop Malone that this was yet another extraordinary cover-up by the Vatican of child sexual abuse by a member of the Catholic priesthood, he indicated that there was nothing more that he could do. And he had so little respect for, for the harms and injuries of the children by this priest that he just threw his hands up, said, too bad. Here's the process. Here's what the church tells me to do. Father Lee is retired but still listed as a priest in the Portland Priest Directory. Just this summer, parish bulletins show he was honored at a mass at Good Shepherd Parish. Brennan says he, quote, personally witnessed Father Lee proudly standing at the altar of the diocese cathedral during major celebrations, and I have even encountered him at a private reception at Bishop Malone's home. Between New York and Maine, Bishop Malone has now been criticized for the way he has handled five separate cases of misconduct involving minors. Many have wondered why a bishop would take the chance supporting priests accused of abuse, but Kendrick has a theory. I see Malone as a career climber, as a guy, you know, he thought he'd go from here to, uh, uh, I think, Boston or, or, or Philadelphia or uh, Chicago, perhaps, one of the larger dioceses, that's, 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 that's what he's interested in. Because guess what? If he yells too loud, he's not going to go to Philadelphia or Buffalo even. He knows that. Charlie Speck, 7 Eyewitness News. Now, in response to our reporting, Bishop Malone issued a statement that reads in part, quote, I stand by the fact that the canonical process as it relates to Father Thomas Lee and Father Paul Coughlin was scrupulously followed during my time as bishop in Portland, Maine. For anyone to imply that there was any sort of cover-up in either case is patently false. We were transparent, issuing press releases and letters to the faithful throughout both investigations. You can see the bishop's entire statement right now on our WKBW app.